All right, guys, welcome to this quick overview here. What we're going to be taking a look at is the GCHD NK2 from Eon or EON. I'm not sure how they want me to pronounce that, so whatever, I'm just going to guess. I'm going to assume it's Eon. Uh, what this does is this hooks your GameCube up to your television or your upscaler through HDMI. Let's just go ahead and go into the unboxing, and then we'll go into uh, the other stuff after that. Okay, guys, what we got here is the GCHD mk2 from eon or eon i'm not exactly sure how to pronounce that it comes in this uh, real cute little gamecube shaped box here uh i dig it but uh what we're gonna do is we're gonna just tear this open and take a look at it now i actually bought this as a replacement to this kaiko um hdmi out from the digital port on the back of my gamecube now this thing was garbage um, it only lasted a few months and I barely used it. I mean, I mostly just use my consoles when I'm doing uh, review videos at this point. And so I've used my GameCube just a few times. So I can't believe this thing didn't hold up. All the connections on the back of it uh, that connected it to the digital port just stripped away and broke um, just when I was moving it, which is just ridiculous because I, I just don't think there was that much stress on it whatsoever. So that product sucks. I'm hoping this one's better. Now, this one's about two times the price. This is 150 bucks for this. So I hope this one holds up a lot better than that one because I believe that one cost me 80. But what we're going to do is we're just going to tear this box open real quick. We're going to take a look at what's inside. And then I'm going to just plug this into the GameCube and check out the options and see what this thing can do. As far as I know, all it really does is it'll just put out digital uh, signal uh, through HDMI at 480p and that's pretty much all i needed to do i didn't know that this actually had a wii port on the back and using that we can actually get a scart signal out of this thing and since all the rest of my consoles are actually hooked up with scart uh to a uh, scart switcher i'm probably just going to end up going that route and scrap like scrap this whole hdmi business here but Anyway, that's that's for later. We're going to be doing HDMI tonight, though, because I'm going to be using my GameCube for a review tonight. So here we are. We're pulling this out of the box. You just got like a little uh, instruction manual here. I'm pretty sure there's not much to it. I do believe you have to uh, program uh, a remote with this. And, you know, fortunately for me, since my Kaiko adapter just broke... I have a spare remote lying around, so that'll be fun. And I'll show that process if that's what we end up having to do. And so that's all that's in the box. So there's not much to that. I, I will just say that this box is adorable. That's that's cute. But here's the actual product. I'm taking a look at this now. Uh, you can see, uh, let's see if I can get this to focus. Focus, you son of a bitch. Yeah, it really doesn't like doing that, going from uh, far to near, but so I guess uh, we'll, we'll get some shots of this later. There we go. But so as you can see, it's just got a, it's got the digital port on the back here, and then it's also got the analog, and I don't believe the analog does anything. It might actually pull sound from the analog. I'm not exactly sure if it does or if that's just there to stabilize. Uh, the connector so it doesn't break like this one did. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, it might actually end up pulling the sound from the analog. I wouldn't be surprised if that's what it did. And then here is where, and I just found this out, this is for a Wii connection cable here. And this is where you can actually put a SCART cable into this, so that kicks ass. And right here is the HDMI port here. So we're just going to go ahead, we're going to hook this up into the GameCube, and then we're going to fire it up, and then I'm going to walk you through the on-screen menus. We're going to take a look at that and see what this thing is capable of doing. So let's take a look at how this connects. So here we are. This is uh, the MK2, and that connects the analog port. That connects to the digital port on the back of the GameCube. That's analog, that's digital and so it's a snug fit so you want to push this down pretty hard you want to push it down really hard actually it snaps into place there and it's pretty sturdy I, that's not going anywhere now here's the hdmi cable this isn't the one i'm going to be using this is just for demonstration purposes that plugs into the side 
that wonky HDMI cable goes right in the side there and right in the back that's the uh, SCART out which I might consider using that but if this HDMI works for me I've already got everything for it like the splitters and whatnot so I might just skip that for this console but that's pretty much all you need to know and then you plug in the power hook this thing back up and turn it on and it's ready to go it's really that simple okay so here we are at the gamecube boot screen here this is for swiss and uh, i'm loading my games off the this bottom port from my gamecube i believe it's called the sds2 if i'm not mistaken but i might have that wrong so anyway uh those the games are being loaded off of that this is not my most favorite software ever but it gets the job done it's just clunky and it's slow compared to you know my other consoles that i've got but it works so that's all we need and uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to try to set up the infrared remote that I've got from the uh, Kaiko HDMI adapter that I had that broke. I, it came with a remote, so I'm going to see if I can make that work with the MK2. So we're going to try to set that up now. There's a button on the back of the MK2, and uh, there should be a picture on the screen. And uh, what we want to do is we just want to push that button and hold it. And there we go. So now we got the infrared remote key config. And we're going to see if we can make this controller work. So, and yep, yeah, it, it works. No problem. So I guess that's uh, one bonus of uh, buying that piece of garbage is that the remote works. So at least we get something out of that. Now, if you buy this, though, you're probably, probably going to want to buy a remote yourself. I don't know what these cost. I assume you can get one for really cheap. I think it'll work with pretty much any infrared remote. So we got that going. And... Uh, you can see we got the options here there's nothing really that i want to do with these options it's a bunch of scan line things uh messing with the output and a lot of that is handled by the swiss software that's running on the gamecube so I'm not really going to mess with that but let's take a look at i mean i might want to just force it to 480 480p but might not even have to just because Swiss is already going to do that. Now, as of right now, though, I already know my uh, Swiss software, for some reason, is set to output at 480i. I'm not really sure why that is. And if I can, whoops, if I can figure out how to change that real quick. Yeah, it's been a while since I messed around with this. <laughs> okay. Force video mode, yeah, it's 480p. All right, so it is in uh, Force 480p. I thought it was 480i for some reason, but okay. So here we go, we got that saved. Now what we do is, what the fuck, video. Get off the screen, you piece of shit. There we go. I don't know why it's defaulting to 480 I, and it's something I'll deal with later. I really don't care. So let's do this. We'll go into here. And now this is what I don't like about Swiss is you'll see the load time on this. It's, I mean, I guess if you're used to um, gaming on older consoles, this really shouldn't shock you. But the menus on the other ODE, like the optical disc emulators that I've got on my Saturn, they are light years ahead as far as like speed goes. So, I mean, this is just like kind of clunky, but let's just move through. I'm going to try to just find a game to load up really quick. And see, there was cell damage. That's the game I'm going to be taking a look at for my next review. But let's load up a game I'm familiar with. We'll do F0 GX. There we go. So 40p. So everything should work there. I would assume now with the MK2 set to 40p and this set to 40p this should just work so there's the game it appears to be working fine and yep this game is in widescreen so that's perfect and there we go so uh, everything appears to be working fine here there you go And I suck at this game, but I don't think there's anyone that's really good at it. It's basically impossible. It's really fun, though. It's a good game.
Just trying to get through this crap, get to the gameplay, and just skip all this. Come on. Yeah, so this works. And right now, you know, this picture looks really good. I don't really think I have any complaints here. I really don't feel the need to... I guess, I, I don't know, I'll probably skip the SCART cable on this. I already did with the Keiko one, and I was happy with that. Image quality, too. See, this looks good to me. I'm not really sure what sending it to the upscaler really will will do for me on that because this this looks pretty damn good so i believe i'm happy with this so okay let's just go ahead and stop this then so what do we think about this guys i mean i'm not going to review like i'm not going to rate this i'm not going to do anything crazy like that i'm just going to say that it works and it works really well from what i can tell and just my initial testing right there and uh it's very good because i need it for tonight i'm going to be uh, reviewing a gamecube game on my next review video so Glad I got this. It's going to come in uh, pretty handy. And, you know, again, like I can just say there's some positives here. Uh, the way that this is connected to the GameCube with the two different ports, uh, this thing's anchored in. I like that. Uh, it kind of sucks. It doesn't come with its own remote. And, you know, thank God that this cheap one did come with the remote so I can use that for this. Uh, I guess that works out. Cool. This should probably just come with the remote. Otherwise, I don't know how you're going to use the options, even though, quite frankly, I don't even really need them. Uh, but, yeah, I'm not going to give this, like, an initial, like, uh, yes or no. Like, should you buy this? Should you not? Just because I don't trust it now at this point because of this thing. So if you would have asked me a week ago, like, what I thought about this, I would have told you that it's awesome. But now I just know that it's not. Now I know it sucks because that thing just broke out of nowhere and I barely ever used it. So hopefully that doesn't happen here. This does feel a lot more sturdy than that one. That's got a lot going for it, but this is also double the price. I also like that this has a SCART out on the back. Uh, something that I would really love to do just because all my other consoles are SCART, but I just don't even know if I feel like doing that and if it's worth the 30 bucks because I think just the HDMI in, I've already got it all set up, so I don't know if it's worth just doing all the extra work and paying the extra money to do that, but regardless that's the mk2 for you uh so far it seems really good if you guys watch my videos if this thing breaks on me you will definitely know because i'll bitch about it in one of my videos non-stop like i did with the Keiko on my last review video so i guess if you just watch those you'll know if this thing fails me but i'm expecting it not to but you never know that being said though it does what i need it to do and thanks for watching this guys i will see you on my review video which should be coming up here probably in just a few days thanks for watching